If you look at your order of service, you will find printed in bold the first verses of Psalm 104. As the psalm is considerably lengthy, we'll be having it in three separate sections. And so, I invite us to say these words together now. Praise the Lord, my soul. O Lord, my God, how great you are. You are clothed with majesty and glory. You cover yourself with light. You have spread out the heavens like a tent, and built your home on the waters above. You use the clouds as your chariot, and ride on the wings of the wind. You use the winds as your messengers, and flashes of lightning as your servants. You have set the earth firmly on its foundations, and it will never be moved. You placed the ocean over it like a rope, and the water covered the mountains. When you rebuked the waters, they fled. They rushed away when they heard your shout of command. They flowed over the mountains and into the valleys, to the place you had made for them. You set a boundary they can never pass, to keep them covering the earth again. The first reading this morning is taken from Psalm 104, verses 10 to 23. Psalm 104, verses 10 to 23. This can be found on page 600 in the front part of the Bible. You make springs flow in the valleys and rivers run between the hills. They provide water for the wild animals. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. In the trees nearby, the birds make their nest and sing. From the sky, you send rain on the hills and the earth is filled with your blessings. You make grass grow for the cattle and plants for human beings to use so that they can grow their crops and produce wine to make them happy, olive oil to make them cheerful, and bread to give them strength. The cedars of Lebanon get plenty of rain the Lord's own trees which he planted. There the birds build their nests. The stocks nest in the fair trees. The wild goats live in the high mountains and the rock badgers hide in the cliffs. You created the moon to mark the months. The sun knows the time to set. You made the night and in the darkness, all the wild animals come out. The young lions roar while they hunt, looking for food that God provides. When the sun rises, they go back and lie down in their dens. Then, people go out to do their work and keep walking until evening. This is the word of the Lord. Continuing with verse 24. Lord, you have made so many things. How wisely you have made them all. The earth is filled with your creatures. There is the ocean, large and wide, where countless creatures live, large and small alike. The ships sail on it, and in it plays Leviathan, the sea monster that you made. All of them depend on you to give them food when they need it. You give it to them and they eat it. You provide food and it is satisfied. When you turn away they are afraid. When you take away your breath they die and go back to the dust from which they came. But when you give them breath they are created. You give new life to the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord be happy with what he has made. 
He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountain and they pour out smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. As long as I live, I will sing praises to my God. May he be pleased with my song, for my gladness comes from him. May sinners be destroyed from the earth. May the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Martin Harris is now going to speak to us, and let's pray for him as he prepares to speak. Lord God, the psalmist asks that you would be pleased with their song, for, your, for their gladness came from you. We pray that Martin and all that he says today will be pleasing to you and build us up to declare your praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Martin. All creatures worship God most high, lift up your voice in earth and sky. Alleluia, alleluia. Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam, oh sing ye, oh sing ye, alleluia. One day, maybe as long as 3,000 years ago, perhaps with King David as harpist and poet, music strikes up and they think, oh, he's got another one. We've just heard the vicar sing Psalm 148. King David's got another one for us. And maybe they just heard Genesis 1 read in the tabernacle. And maybe, and let's assume it's David, we don't know, but it might have been, had been meditating on Genesis 1, in the beginning God created. And he says, how can I speak of Genesis 1, of God's creation? And he says, well, that's all very well and good, but it's, it doesn't capture the wonder that I feel within me as I see it. I want to get inside Genesis 1. I want to do the same thing for Genesis 1 as someone has done for Psalm 148. Thou rushing wind, thou art so strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven along. Alleluia, alleluia. Thou rising morn in praise rejoice, ye lights of evening find a voice. Oh, sing ye, oh, sing ye, alleluia. David has read Genesis 1. He's a bit like a physicist watching a sunrise. He knows the physics, but wow, this is so much more. Like a botanist stepping back in wonder from the microscope as she sees the beauty and delicacy and order of what her microscope reveals. He's like Albert Einstein, sustained by the music of Mozart while toiling on his maths. And David's heart bursts for joy, and he writes, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honour and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your minister messengers, fire and flame your ministers. His heart is lifted, and the hearts of those around are lifted. The heavens declare the glory of God. And so it is in Psalm 104, David takes us through Genesis chapter 1, the, cre the days of creation. The heavens declaring the glory of God. As we come to Jubilee time, we think of our Queen, resplendent in royal clothes, her crown, the jewels, the throne, all declaring her majesty. And for God, what is it for God that declares the majesty 
and the glory of God. Open your eyes to the skies. These are God's garments. Open your ears to the birds. Touch what is around you. Smell spring in the air. These are the clothes of God declaring God's glory. And look at God's walking, talking creation sitting by your side or in front of you, maybe on the screen now. These are the glory and the majesty of God. Buckingham Palace has got nothing on it. The Queen in all her majesty has got nothing on it. The whole of creation, the clothes of God, and those are just the clothes. Wow! And as David thinks about it, the glory of God, David thinks, well, where is the throne of God? And perhaps in David's heart would be what had been in the other psalmist's hearts. They'd have said, Jerusalem, that is where God dwells. God's holy hill, the dwelling place of the Lord. From Jerusalem, the psalmist said, God rules the world. And then the psalmist has said that worshippers are extensions of this sacred space. And so it is that creation worships the dwelling place of God. All who gathered in the temple in Jerusalem, where God ruled and reigned, all were the dwelling place of God, the throne of God. And the New Testament is explicit and widens it. Christ is the one in whom God dwells. Christ is the dwelling place of God. And by Christ's Spirit, Christ dwells in you, and Christ dwells in us, and Christ dwells in the church. The church, and in Christ, is the dwelling place of God. You and we as a community. But then the psalmist takes us back again because Christ reigns and God reigns not just in Jerusalem. And David broadens it even more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. You, O Lord my God, you are very great. He looks at the sky, you are clothed with honour and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the winds. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth in its foundations, so it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. The whole of creation, David sees, is the dwelling place of God. And there in that dwelling place of God, especially in Christ and through Christ's Spirit, in Christ's followers, the church. The throne, the dwelling place of God. But as David continues to sing, his mind goes from the story of creation to that of the deliverance from Egypt. And David thinks of the dry desert through which God had led them, where God had prepared, had defeated the Egyptians, had opened the Red Sea up, had miraculously provided manna, bread from heaven day by day, and water from the rocks. And David thinks of himself ruling, and he thinks of maybe the dry deserts around him as a king, which he knew as a shepherd. He knew what it was to always be on the hunt for green grass and still water for the sheep. And he remembers how God has provided, and he thinks of the needs of his nation, of the nation he rules, of Israel. And in the midst of his need, whatever his needs were, whatever the needs for harvest of that nation, which had good and bad harvests, good and bad times like any country, David reminds himself of how God gives everything he needs. And maybe in a dry, hot summer, where they were not sure where the water or the harvest would come from, he is reminded, Psalm 104, as he writes, You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal, and wild asses quench their thirst. 
By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation. They sing among the branches. From their your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. Wow, he thinks. Thou flowing water, pure and clear, make music for thy God to hear. Alleluia, alleluia. Thou fire so masterful and bright, that givest all birth warmth and light. Oh, sing ye, oh, sing ye, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And David rejoices in the provision of creation, the wealth of all that God has given us and which exemplified itself as the children of Israel went through the wilderness. A young family had a four-year-old boy. Mum said that she was about to make a crucial decision. She had to get her son into the right preschool group, because if she didn't, then he wouldn't get himself into the school she wanted for him. And that would affect his education badly after that because it would mean he would not be connected to the bankers in the city, and he might not get the kind of job where he could make a lot of money. But maybe, if that family had sung this song of David, they would not grasp for themselves, but trust in the God who provides to overflow, giving to all who need manna in the wilderness of which today we sing and rejoice as we hear of God's provision over the last year, as we eat bread and drink wine, as we share in communion, speaking of the manna that God gave in the wilderness, and the wine of rejoicing, even giving thanks to the blood of Christ shed on the cross. And as we leave behind the screens of the bank, and in the porch ready for Monday morning, Harlow Food Bank waits to provide manna for those in need, for the one in ten in Harlow who have depended on it in the last year. For there are more food banks in the UK than there are McDonald's. But next time you come in and hear and see the food bank, or come indeed to visit the food bank, it is not simply a judgment on the failure of our capitalism. It is not simply saying to capitalism and the whole modern world, East and West, must do better. But Food Bank is saying, this is what the kingdom of God is. This is what happens when Christians like Gary and Theresa not pray and look to God and say, how do we order ourselves as a society? How do we trust in the God who provides? And they, and we, and all who come to Food Bank, discover the God who provides through creation, as God did for the children of Israel in the wilderness. And this is what all of life is like if we trust our Father in heaven. There is manna for all. God in creation has given us all we need. And there is no shortage of gas, of food, of money, except one that we have made. There is no shortage in the kingdom of heaven. We need not plunder creation or neighboring countries or build societies where there is massive inequality and the poor are ignored. But as we see all of creation as the glory and throne of God, as we are respected with humility and rejoice in it, we find it provides all we need for now and eternity. And David thinks of this glory of God of its provision, and if he looks, as it were, towards those days when pain and suffering will have been defeated and will go, he glimpses them afar 
in the closing verses of Psalm 104. Verse 27, all of these things depend on you to give them food when they need it. You give it to them and they eat it. You provide food and they are satisfied. When you turn away, they are afraid. When you take away your breath, they die and go back to the dust from which they came. But when you give them breath, they are created. You give new life to the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord be happy with what he has made. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they pour out smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. As long as I live, I will sing praises to my God. May he be pleased with my song, for my gladness comes from him. May sinners be destroyed from the earth. May the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise.